And so on uh, New Year's Day, 1961, a way to begin a decade, uh, Kendra and I arrived in the living room of uh, Timothy Leary. Uh, there was a vial on the coffee table after coffee we had had and pleasantry. He sprinkled some tablets on the turned out to be psilocybin, I believe, on that occasion. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I have it, of course, in my notes, but I don't remember uh, which it was at that time. But anyway, uh, and he, he said um, one is a mild dose, uh, two a medium dose, three a heavy dose, be my guest. Uh, I took two, Kendra, more venturesome, took three, and in about uh, 40 minutes or an hour, I was in the visionary state, which I had been uh, giving my all for, for about 15 or 20 years. Now, I had no doubt from the start that it was authentic. Uh, First of all, because it uh, validated experien experientially my worldview that was already in place. Uh, in uh, philosophical par uh, parlance, that was the great chain of being, which envisioned all reality as proceeding uh, from the infinite, at its apex, which contained within it every virtue, the, the Hindus say Satchitananda, uh, infinite being, infinite awareness, infinite bliss, but Plato says the good, the true, the virtue, uh, the beautiful, um, all smelted down in uh, everything in its virtuous uh, mode, which is by the great chain of being, the only true mode, because the dross enters as one falls away from this uh, sacred source. But when uh, enters uh, or from where we are, our station, one rises towards the source in steps, in stages. And uh, I said I had no doubt from the first that this is valid because it was retracing exactly what I was convinced was the nature of reality, but I had not experienced the upper echelon. Also, it brought an element of surprise. <laughs> I'm, that's a confession, because the text should have prepared me for this surprise, but obviously I sort of passed over that. And that was the element of fear, or more precisely, awe. Awe, I came to see so clearly, is the distinctive. Hum, uh, religious emotion, because it combines two emotions that otherwise tend to be opposites, namely fear and fascination. Now, in awe, the fascination, you want to move towards it, because this is not only unknown territory, but territory one could not have imagined actually exists, so what could be more fascinating than that? So that draws you to it. But on the other hand, it's new territory, and are the natives friendly? Uh, is the ozone atmosphere viable? So you don't know, and so that causes you to hold back. And it's this unique blend of fear and fascination. And I experienced both just solidly right together uh, from early on. 
and the intensity was mounting as I was mounting the links of the great chain of being uh, until I got to the penultimate level, next to the infinite, the absolute. And there I paused, took a second take on this question. Do I want to make that final step or do I not? And at that moment, uh, Tim and the psychiatrist, Alexander, I uh, forget his uh, first name, had, uh, was there sort of in the background observing during the day, but they were in another part, left me. Kendra was in a different room alone, and but would check in every now and then. And I remember just as I was debating, do I want to take that second, that final step or not? And Tim walked in pleasantly, relaxed, uh, how are things going? And I said, Tim, uh, you better watch out as to, and be aware of what you're playing with here. Because uh, if I decide to take this final step, uh, you might end with a corpse on your couch because uh, the emotional intensity is increasing so exponentially that if I take that step, it might, I, I feel it might be like plugging a toaster into a power line. And there you would have me on your hand. I said, don't worry, don't worry. I have a family and uh, uh, love them, and uh, I don't find life that intolerable anyway. So I'm not going to take that step. But I want to register, and I'm, I'm well aware I'm under the influence, but that doesn't uh, in any way undercut what I'm saying. Uh, that uh, I, at this moment, it, it feels very clear to me that if I do make the step, uh, my, it will shatter my physical frame. Well, in retrospect, this remove, I, I think I was wrong in that. I, uh, there are not many, that many, I, I guess I'm not aware of any report of any deaths occurring through norm to normally healthy people through these substances. So I, I, I think I was wrong there. And, but, I'm, but nevertheless, uh, it, was, it rang true. My, my sentiment rang true to what I was experiencing. Well, uh, that was a start. You a you're asking at this point what has been the effect on my life. And, well, <laughs> we were talking about creativity, and we have psychologists in the room here. And uh, But another uh, question, baffling question, is behavior change. How do you measure behavior change? Uh, and what causes it? If anybody, psychologist, got a firm grip on that question, why uh, to say their reputation would be made would be an understatement. So when I ask what has been its effect on my life, I, you see, I have no idea what my life would have been like without them. So what's the basis of comparison? It's like I heard somebody say, the, we have the, the, there is a saying, isn't life strange to which someone quipped, compared with what? <laughs> uh, and it's a little bit like that when I'm uh, asked what has been its effect. So I can uh, not say in terms of virtue or anything comparative, I have no basis for that, but um, it, uh, but there are other uh, inputs that are very clear. And one is that um, I am immensely grateful that I had that 
experience and several others following of the same nature. By the way, in my case, I must have had about a half dozen where the, uh, uh, including the Good Friday experiment that you know about, that were very powerful. And then for me, why the utility seemed to go down very quickly and the bummers uh, increased and so on. And so uh, I came to the conclusion, uh, I love uh, Ram Dass's statement, uh, admonition, when you um, get the message, hang on. And so it seemed to me that I'd gotten the message. And so I, I find myself to this day in this very uh, just intellectually curious situation that one of, um, I have fallen in the pattern of saying, one of the three most important experiences of my life. Uh, the first being marriage and the family, children. The second, my first trip around the world where one's eyes are open uh, to this world and world's phantasmagoria. Uh, and then the third is this one, another order of reality. What Castaneda says in the title of one, a separate reality. Not just separate, but that's very important as distinct and different, but incredibly more mysterious and more awesome and more wonderful than the other. So I find myself in this curious situation of uh, here is one of the three most important experiences of my life, and yet I have uh, no desire, no inclination uh, to repeat the experience. And that's uh, puzzling, that's puzzling. Uh, the, I don't think I'm at the bottom of it, but I have some reason. On the one, there is one element of the awe, which includes fear. And uh, so that may contribute to my reluctance. Uh, a second reason is that I feel like I know what that, where that place is. And I know that it is there. And now uh, the work is to transform uh, the components of my life into uh, conditions where uh, they more approximate that state. Now there's an agenda, and that's my job at the moment, at present, uh, to do, rather than go on a kind of spiritual R&R of uh, revisiting uh, that land. Uh, I want to qualify that last pejorative and flippant statement of spiritual R&R uh, &R because I think that these experiences can, and uh, I, I have experiences too, um, exert a kind of spiritual gravitational pull on a life and in themselves move the life towards it.